guys, welcome back to the second video on my simple UI state machine. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go over actually implementing the UI state that we created in the last video and go over creating a simple UI menu setup that we'll be using the states that we created. I'll start off by creating a new folder under our UI, actually make it under the scripts. And this will be our test, what is, test states. How about that? That's good enough. These are going to be very general names. You'll be amazed. But I'm going to call it UI test state A. I'll create two more. And this will be UI test state B. And I'll finish up my really original names by calling it UI test state C. Ooh, fancy. Now I'll just open up all of these. And oops, uh, let me clear this out. There we go. Now we'll start with test state A. So let's start off, this is going to be a very simple one. I'm going to actually be doing all the implementing of all these states, and then we'll wire up everything in the UI later. First off, we'll inherit from our UI state that we created. And I'll remove all this stuff. We'll do all this work here. Now, the way that I have uh, the UI states, and you may remember our UI, let me go here. Our UI state ID. This is the value that is used within the uh, state machine. Now, within here, we're going to do our public override int state ID get. Now, in here, you can easily go, okay, return. ID of one for this state. Now you have two different ways you can handle this. And I chose one of these following two. And we'll go with that one. But here's the other way you can handle it. You could create another file and toss it in public enum and do states or something along like this and have your main menu equal one, options equal to, et cetera. And then in here, you could do your states dot main menu, and return that value. And you'd have to do some conversions and all this fancy stuff all through your code to get that. Now I didn't choose that method of doing that. And here differently, in this class, I chose to do a static public int and just call this ID. And this is the state's ID, and I'm giving it one. Now, wherever you want in your code, you can go the class name dot ID. Da da. You have this simple solution. And you can do that everywhere in your code. And you'll see how we transition, and it makes things pretty damn simple. Also, you can do your public override string that we created for the state name. And return whatever you want. This will be UI test state a fancy name. And that's all you have to do to make our UI state be implemented and ready to go with our state machine. Now for the fun part of all those interfaces that we created. In this one, yeah. Oh god. Keyboard's going crazy and I have no idea what's going on. One second. Technical difficulties. Oh god. Hmm. Okay, anyway, I on state awake. 
Oh god, this is gonna be hilarious. On stay enter. Okay. I on state exit. Now these are all the interfaces that we'll be implementing. I'm going to do the easy cheat in Visual Studio, which is awesome. You may have something in your visual editor also. But if you don't, you'll have to go out and type pretty much public void on awake, enter, and on exit, all that stuff. <laughs> Now this is going to be a very simple UI. All test state A UI is going to do is going to go transfer us to test state B. So in here, we're going to do a public button from the Unity UI, and I'll just call this button switch to state B. My spelling is atrocious, or my keyboard is going crazy. Also, for this button, we can resolve this and use the Unity UI namespace. Oop. Sorry about that. And here, we're going to check. Whoa. OK, sorry about that. One second, I'm going to get another keyboard. And hopefully that will fix this problem. And let's see if this works. Nope, it does not like that right there. Okay, I'm sorry for this, but I'm going to be using my mechanical keyboard and it may be really loud. So turn down your volumes if you want or be prepared. But anyway, in here, we're going to do our button check if it's not null. And if it's not null, we're going to be adding the method to the buttons listener. So if button switch to state B does not equal null, we'll do our button dot on click dot add listener. And in here, we'll just create a method name called on click switch to state B. I love my naming conventions this time around. So good. Down here at the bottom, we'll just create a public void method and we'll just call it what we passed. Now in here is the magic of changing between states. We're gonna do state machine. So the one was controlling us and then set state. Since this is a hard switch, we're just going to use the set state method. Then we're going to state B. We'll do set B start ID. Oh, and we'll get an error here since we haven't implemented B yet. And also, we're going to do some other housekeeping. So on awake, this dot game object dot set active will be false because we don't want this actual being shown. And in here, we're going to do the same, but on enter, we're going to show this UI, and on exit, we're going to hide it again. Now, if you want this to be part of uh, your behavior of your state machine, you can go in and change it so these methods are automatically called when you switch states. Um, I'm leaving them out for now until I get really annoyed and really want that implemented. Now we'll jump over to B state. Actually, come up here to the top. Copy all of this. Go into B. Paste. Go into C. Paste. 
and we'll just do all of this UI state, UI state, come down here, change this to C, C, come over to B, change this to B, not B, <laughs> B. Okay, now that's all good. In this state, I'm going to use several more interfaces because the way B, B transitions back to A, but also B transitions to C, but unlike A to B, we're not just hard setting the state. We're going to be pushing C onto the stack. So C is going to be over B. So we'll also show that when I set it up, but C is going to look like a pop-up menu along those things. And then it'll go away. And the state B's UI will stay visible behind C at all times. So in here, I'm going to do my on state wake, I on state inner, I on state exit, I on state focus, I on state defocus. And I will implement all of these. The fast, easy way, because I am lazy, and there is nothing wrong with it. Cool. Now on this UI, we're going to have two buttons. And just like the other one, switch to state A, copy paste that, switch to state C. Cool. Now in awake, you can jump out back to your state A and grab this null check and add listener setup and paste that twice into here. And we'll rename this to button switch state A and the other one to button switch C. And these two methods that it's trying to add to the, as listeners will add to the bottom. So public void on switch A, public void on switch C. And down here we'll do our switching state machine dot set state since this is a hard switch. UI state switch a dot id. And down here, we're pushing the state on top of the state machine stack. So UI is the state c dot id. And that's all there is for switching between those. Also do a couple more up here. So back into the awake, we'll do our this dot game object dot set active to false. We'll copy that on enter. We'll set this to true. On exit, we'll set this to false. Oops, it's already false. And down here on the on focus and defocus, we're actually going to be turning off the interactive. We're going to turn off the buttons if then say that they're not interactive anymore. So I'm going to actually create another method down here just so we don't have, well, we're going to type more, but it'll make our lives a little bit easier. Call this toggle interactivity. Cool value. And here I'm just going to go button switch a dot interactable equals value. Button switch C dot interact all equals value. On focus, we'll call toggle interactivity and set this to true. Copy paste in on defocus and we'll say this is false. And that is everything for state B. State C is extremely simple as well. So I can show you how to make this a little bit more complex and have a little bit of fun, but 
For now, we'll do the very simple. Get this running. Ion state awake. Ion state enter and ion state exit will be our interfaces for here. I know this is super exciting. And also we'll have a public button like all the other ones. Switch to state. and be using this namespace. Also jumping back to our copy pasting. Actually this time I'm gonna copy paste the game object set active too. A little bit less writing. Change this to B, B, and B. Some of the same old public void. That'll be the method be used on the on click event. Now on this on click, we're going to do state machine dot pop state. That will remove this state from the stack. Also, you can call this. And set when it's entering to set the game object activity to true. That's all we have to do to set up these three states to switch between each other. So we'll jump back into Unity and start setting up the UI. Let me clear these out. First off, I'm going to create a. Eh, let's just do a panel. So this canvas here, we'll do, I'm going to call this UI state machine. I'm going to delete this panel. <laughs> I'm picky. And in here, we'll just add our UI state machine class. I'm going to toss this in the prefabs. And now we'll create a empty object. And I'll add UI test state A. Move B. I remove this one as well and go see. I'll go through and rename each one of these. And each of these are going to be container objects. So I'm going to select them all. Come up here to the anchor position and set it to stretch in all directions. And then I'm going to clear out the left, top, and right, and bottom so it automatically fills its higher container. Because these are just going to be empty objects that'll hold all of your UI elements. I'm going to make a prefab of each one of these. Because the way this works is each one of these is individual, and you should be able to drag whichever ones you want onto the state machine. And it'll interact with whatever's on the state machine at the time. They don't have to worry about what other states are there or interact with them. So everything's confined to their own state. Now we'll just start with UI. First UI, create another panel. This will be the background. Move the alpha, set this something dark, maybe bluish. Do my renaming background. I'm going to duplicate this, toss it into each one. Cool. Now I'm going to take a UI and do, uh, let's see, on the background, I'm going to do UI text. Do some anchors to the top. No, I'm not going to really cover how to do UI right now. And oh, reason you can't see it because the other backgrounds are covering it up, I believe. Or the fact that the text is way off the screen. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, the pivot. The uh, pivot. 
change this to no. Change the y pivot to one, and then set the y position back to zero. Down in the text, we'll do UI or state A. We'll make this big. Make it fit center, and I'll change it to white so you can see it. Um, gonna move it down a little bit. Oh wait. Do the alignment to center there. Cool. I'm also gonna copy paste this onto the backgrounds of the other ones as well. Since everything will have a name, this will make it easy. Cool. And now on this background as well, we're going to create some buttons finally. These don't really have to be anywhere. And I will name these button switch to state B. Zoom in on that fancy button. Right. Now down, let me get the hierarchy up here and focus. Oh, back on. Now I'm going to copy paste these or duplicate these buttons into each of these backgrounds here because each one will have their own. And I'll just rename these to A. C, this one goes back to B. That one's good. Change the tech on these to their corresponding states. Cool. Now oh, that's there. Now I'm going to apply all the changes to these prefabs that we made. It's good. Working. And going back to the UI state A, base game object for that state come up here and we need the button here. So we're gonna drag and drop the button for that state. And apply the changes, jump down to the next state, turn this on, and then go A and C buttons. Since these ones are, they're overlapping right now, so we need to drag them apart. Then we'll open up state C as well. We jump that in there. Apply changes. Did I apply changes for this? Apply changes there as well. And now you have this all wired up and everything should work the way. Also, another note if this game object is not active, so this check mark up in the inspector is not there, it will not be added to the state machine and it won't actually. It'll be as if it wasn't actually existing here in the first place. So you need all of these enabled. And also, over here in the UI state machine, our initial state. I'm just going to drag and drop state A into that slot and apply. And now I will run this and we'll hopefully it'll work. We're in state C. Hmm. Weird. And that button brought us nowhere. That is strange. Now I wonder why that is. Let's see here. Doo -doo -doo. And all three of our state IDs are exactly the same value. <laughs> so when it's adding it to the state machine, it's overriding this ID with state C since it's the last one to be added. So let's change these values. B will be 2, and C will be 3. Yeah, that's an important note. Just remember to change this. Or weird stuff like this will happen. Now let's try that again. Hey, correct state. Now if we want to switch to state B, we're there. Switch back to A, we're back there. State B, now we want to go to C. We're there. And now if you notice down here in the hierarchy, when we're in B, B's the only one active. We go to C, C's active. Cool. Now you can't really see that here. Let's exit out of this and go back to the other 
select the C, bring it into focus, and where is it? There we go. Now we're going to change, let's see, I'm going to attach that to the, yes, break it. So I'm going to have everything attached to the background so I can easily do this. Change the background from stretch and all to anchor to the center. Now let's change the width to, how about 640 by 480? And I'll change this color to how about just a lighter blue, pink, uh, how about a purple? Nice purplish, violetish color. Cool. There that is. Oh, and let's also, okay, I'm going to disable this real quick. Going to state B, take these buttons and move them down. Oh, they'll still be on the, should be on the UI. And this way you'll be able to see how the interac their interactable value is going to change. Well, go back to C and enable the background that I disabled. And okay, here we are. We're in state A to B, back to A, back to B. And now to state C. It popped up. These buttons in back. Can't click them. This pop up. This could be whatever you want. Go back to save C, B. And this all works. There you have it. That's very simple UI using the state machine that we tossed together. We can also have some fun doing animations along those lines. And then the order which we would call our methods and things like that would change a little bit but everything would pretty much be the same. Um, if I have time, I'll toss another video together with um, doing a couple of quick animations with the animator and making this little simple UI do a little, a couple of fun things, maybe. We'll see. Um, anyway, thanks for watching and I hope this has been helpful and showed you some things. And as always, this uh, project will be up on GitHub if you want some of the source code. There'll be a few comments if there are any help. And all that will be down in the description. So there you go. Hope this was good. See you in the next video.